had like four or five weeks where where, where my head was just I just didn't know what I was going to do. My, mm. my world had caved in. Did you debate quitting? Uh, to be honest, I. I, I How many kids you got, Danny? Six. Six? Yeah, All six, boys, six. girls? So I've got uh, two girls, yeah. four boys. Wow. So, yeah, so uh, so my, my eldest daughter, so I've got three. I've, I've got, <laughs> here we go. So I've got, <laughs> <laughs> I've, got to remember that. <laughs> so I've got a daughter to my first marriage. Yeah. And then I've got two boys to my next relationship. And then I've got uh, a boy and a girl to what was my current relationship and a stepson. So... Sadly, my, my partner, Carrie, uh, love me like she passed away in uh, February. Sorry to hear that, mate. Yeah, so it was pretty tough. So it sort of, you know, it hit, hit me like a steam train, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, and I spent four or five weeks just not knowing what to do. Uh, obviously, social media stuff, it, it slowed down. Obviously, I, I didn't do anything, but it sort of, obviously, people picked up on what was going on. So there were a lot of newspaper articles locally in Leeds and, and what had happened. Uh and obviously three kids at home, so there's like, uh, like my, my two youngest and then Carrie's eldest, who's my stepson. It just, it was just awful. Just yeah. out, out of the blue, awful. Wow. Uh, and then all of a sudden, after like four or five weeks, I got a lot of support from people coming round and, and talking to me and phoning yeah. me. And I just decided, you know what, you know, she she wouldn't want me to sit and wallow in self-pity and, you know, I, I've got to do what I can for kids and I've got to show my kids that, you know, the the mum would have wanted us to, to be happy and live on. Mm. And to be honest, the, the, the YouTube sort of fame, if you like, when it took off, come around that time, like four or five weeks in, it started to grow then. Uh, so it, it it's changed the life for me and the kids and it's given us some good to focus on. So my kids, when they see me on things like this, mm. uh, radio interviews, uh, in newspapers, they think it's amazing. You yeah, know, it's, like, it's like my, my oldest lad and my daughter. When I said I was coming down here for you today, my God, my oldest lad he was straight on the phone to his mates. Look at this, and then when you put it on the other week, his mates were phoning him up. Oh, I can't believe he's going on. <laughs> <laughs> so, like again for me, you know, some mm. fat bloke from Leeds eating kebabs being down here, it's quite surreal. And but it's helped me out with, with, with my kids, and I can't thank people enough for the support they've given me. And I've touched on it a few times. Uh, we did a PO box uh, a few weeks ago. We opened a PO box because people were saying, "Look, we want to send you stuff. We want to send you a T-shirt, this, that, other." And it, it's just been crazy. Has we, it? Yeah, we did one last week, and I think there were like forty-five packages. I walked into the post office, told last day she was going to shoot me. She said, "Are you having a laugh?" She said, "I says, why? What's up, love?" She says, "Look, and the bloody piled up." I she says, "We've oh, never wow. had so much in his life." Wow. So I, I opened up this package, and uh, inside it was some dog tags and somebody had engraved. A picture of me and carry on. Obviously, they looked mm. at it and looked online, seeing this picture, and it, it just it, it just ripped me to bits. To be honest, I, I was so upset, and uh, my head went down. I had to stop filming for a bit because, you know, it really got me inside the fact that somebody just went out of the way to to one research it, but just just send me a gift like that. Mm. And then she'd also done a, a slate uh, tile as well with another picture on. So obviously, I got all my kids. They watch it. They watch the episodes. So like I sort of pre-warned my daughter a little bit because I knew it would it'd probably upset her a bit. And a tear come to her eye, you know, she started crying a little bit. Uh, but my son, he, my youngest, he went straight for dog tags. He says, look, can I can I have this, Dad? Oh, really? Uh, yeah, and she'd actually engraved uh, on the back of it, see you in Neverland Tink, which is what uh, I'd said at the funeral. But I'd also said it on a post as well. So again, she's, this woman's looked for the detail and put it on. Wow. That's a lovely example of when the internet can be at its yeah. best. Do you know what I mean? Because we, especially on this show as well, we, we often talk and discuss about the trolls and the, the negative sides yeah. of it. But that that is a, a, a lovely touch. Now, um, you was with your partner for 13, 13 years, weren't yeah. you? Yeah. And then obviously after the tragic passing, you've still continued to do content. And I think a lot of people and a lot of the, the praise that I see in your comments and that is just how positive you are and how polite you are to people and how lovely you seem as a person how how hard was that that period then because you're going through one of the biggest traumatic sort of experiences anyone can go through but you're also having to be this fun lovable chap online yeah so i think like like i said i had like four or five weeks where where, where my head was just i just didn't know what i was going to do my, mm. my world had caved in did you debate quitting uh to be honest i i, I couldn't even think about anything yeah to, to be fair uh i think you know it if you if you've been in relationships and you and you've split up with somebody, you know, and especially like if children are involved, you you're still gonna have 
a connection. You, you know, if you split up with somebody, you can shout at them, you, you can still speak to them or message them. But when it's so sudden like that and they're gone and you don't know what's going on, it, it just you're just in a different zone. You don't know what, you know, it's like a ton of bricks. Mm. But I have got my own Facebook page and this is where it all sort of started really for me because just at the first lockdown when everybody started panic buying bog rolls and this and that other, uh, I did a bit of a rant. Carrie filmed it. Right. I'm just sat on the sofa and I just said, look, love, don't you be telling people we've got 80,000 bog rolls and 20,000 sanitizers that'll be kicking door in. <laughs> and uh, she put it online. And mm. I, I remember the next day my phone's buzzing. I'm thinking, what's this? And it's like ding, like, like, like. And then in in the end, it got over 8 million views mm. over different platforms. I'm wow. Like, oh, so I did another one. Yeah. So she, she sat there and, and we started it off all the same. So she'd start it off saying, what's up then, Dan? And then I turned to her and I just start moaning about, I says, you know, like, well, like when uh, McDonald's opened back up, she says, what's up? I says, what's bloody up? I says, they're all queuing at McDonald's. I says, there's a queue a mile long, I says, for, for a crappy little burger. I said, and then they're on Facebook saying, look at size at queue, McDonald's. But they're sat in it, fat knackers. They're all sat there <laughs> in queue, moaning about it taking two hours to get a cheeseburger. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I just sort of did stuff like that. Mm. And I think we did about, about 35, 40 videos. Uh, did you? Yeah. But she's she was laughing in, in these. And she's got quite a distinctive laugh. And people had comment about it and laugh. And I was just like so serious, like a Victor Meldrew type thing. Look, love, you know, it's, it's not right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so obviously when, when, when Carrie passed, uh, I haven't done anything on that page since. Yeah. But I am going to, and it, my daughter, she wants to take over that role. Right. She loved them, those videos, and she says, can I do what, what my mum did? So when the time's right, when I'm feeling like we can go for it, that's what we're going to be looking at doing. Yeah, that's uh, lovely. Yeah. But uh, as far as if else, it was just sort of, I just got to pick myself up and think, do you know what? I've I've got to show the kids that that life can go on, and you know we can get enjoyment out of life, and mm. we'll always remember. Yeah, know, I always remember Carriage. You know what I mean? Mm. And so every day we talk about her. Every day, you know, the kids and I will say good night, say good night to each other, say good night to Carrie, and you know I, I just promote that with them, and and I want them to to be open with me and talk about the feelings, talk about how it is with them, mm. because I'm I'm a strong believer in you know you keep things to yourself. It's just no good, right? You know, for, for, your, for your mental health. You, you, you're such a. From just meeting you an hour and a half ago, it's clear to see you're such an honest and open, yeah. open book. What would you say to any? Because I'm sure you're you're an inspiration to many, especially how openly you were talking about about this. What 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 advice would you give to anyone out there? Maybe younger people or people that are experiencing gr grieving for the for the first time. I, I, I'm I'm very very blessed blessed in my life. Apart from a granddad, I, I'm very very lucky with the people I've still got around me and stuff. And obviously that is a worry from people that haven't experienced that. How do you do you? I guess you can never get over it. But how do you manage to cope with the with the pain? Yeah, I think you know one of the key things is 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 having people in your life that are, are going to support you know that you feel safe around and that you can talk to and, and if you haven't got those people which unfortunately some people haven't mm -hmm. some people haven't got a big family or a big friend group so they can feel isolated uh you know that there are places out there uh, I've I've done a few things with charities and you know, like going forward, I, I, I want to help out. I want to, you know, especially like with mental well-being and mental health and stuff. I think it's because of what's happened recently with COVID. It's mentally, it's put people in in in, in just a whole different space. Mm. Uh, and it's like with me. I mean, I I, a, I did a video last week and a, a chap come up and just approached me while I was eating the takeaway and said to me uh, that, that he's, he's not been in the right good mental space in his head. And I just said to him, you know, Personally, for me, I get up in the morning and I think to myself, right, I'm going to be the best I can be today. I'm, I'm not going to let nobody put me down, no negativity. You know, words are words. People can say what they want to say. I just I don't take it to heart. I think, you know, just get up, be positive, have positive, positive mental attitude. If you wake up thinking that you're going to be, you're going to do good and be good, you're going to go to bed going, I've done the best I can do today. There we That's go. It. Don't be a failure. Don't, don't, you know, you, you can't fail at nothing, I believe. I think you, you can only succeed. Yeah. Uh, and you learn by your mistakes. Yeah, you're you know? a t top top guy, top advice yeah. there, mate. And 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 you, I'm sure you're, you're doing a proud. And yeah, yeah. we all love seeing, seeing your journey, so keep it going. Rate My Takeaways, official number one takeaway in the entirety of the UK. It's like you
still gear top four. To this, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> this is more important.